Hello. Uh, so we continue with the chapter acids, bases, and salts from standard tenth chemistry. Uh, up till now, we already studied the different types of acids, the different function, the different properties of acids, the different properties of bases, and the different types of bases. We also learned the different kinds of salts and the different methods of preparation of salts. So accordingly, we studied that the salts can be prepared by five main types. The first one is neutralization, wherein the insoluble base is reacted with an acid to give you salt plus water. The next one is titration, which is also a kind of neutralization. Only thing being that here the salt which is going to be formed will be a soluble salt. So when you are producing a soluble salt from a soluble base, then you will be using the method of titration. The third one was an, a simple displacement method wherein you are uh, act, uh, reacting an active metal with an acid to give you the uh, salt which is uh, going to be available with hydrogen gas being released. And the next one was direct combination which was formed by binary salts which were made up of combination of A plus B giving you AB. And uh, finally was the double decomposition reaction wherein you are taking two salts which are soluble in nature and what you are going to get is one soluble salt and an insoluble salt in the form of precipitation. We also see that if you want to prepare an insoluble salt from another insoluble salt then you need to first convert that insoluble salt which you are using into a soluble one and then you are converting that soluble into a separate kind of insoluble one. So it is a two step process when it is using an insoluble salt. Now we will see in detail that how are the methods of preparation of some specific salts. So the first method of preparation for some specific salt is for the preparation of copper sulphate that is first one is CuSO4.5H2O so copper sulphate is going to be the first one so we see over here preparation of soluble salts that are soluble in water that is CuSO4.5H2O Na2SO4.10H2O FeSO4.7H2O ZNHO4.7H2O, FeCl3, prepared by neutralization, displacement and direct combination. So we can see that all the ones which are soluble salts are normally being prepared using the method of neutralization, displacement or direct combination. The preparation of insoluble salts, that is salts that are insoluble in water, that is BBCl2, CaCO3, ZnCO3, PbSO4 generally prepared by double decomposition. So if you are preparing an insoluble salt, then it will be prepared with the help of double decomposition. Now again I will repeat that the table what we had formed about the solubility, the solubility chart what we have uh, prepared that which are the salts which are soluble which are the salts which are insoluble what are the exceptions over there is very very important because that will tell you that what kind of method is to be used for a particular preparation of a salt so recovery of the soluble salts so whenever you are going to have the salt being prepared the next thing what will be required is to have a recovery of the salt see if you are having a soluble salt then how you are going to recover that salt from that particular thing is the main issue so first thing is salts formed in aqueous solution and so must be recovered from the solution generally it is by evaporation or crystallization so you are either going to go for evaporation or you're going to go for crystallization for the recovery of soluble salts which are formed in the form of aqueous solution whereas evaporation is generally used for the salts which cannot withstand dry heating and crystallization when the salt is decomposed by dry heating so when the salt is going to be getting decomposed so whenever uh, the salt when if you heat a particular kind of a solution and it is going to get decomposed then you cannot use the dry heating type of a method so in such a case you are going to use the method of crystallization whereas whenever you are going where it is not going to happen means when you are heating it and there is no decomposition taking place to the salt then you will be using the method of evaporation wherein you are going to heat the substance and uh, dry heat the substance and you are going to get the required salt. So 
nitrates and sulfates are generally recovered by crystallization so this is the important part that crystallization is so when you are using crystallization you are going to be having the nitrates or you will be using the chlorides sulfates sorry sulfates so sulfates and nitrates are going to be recovered from the aqueous solution with the means of crystallization so now let's see the preparation of copper sulfate this is by action of dilute acid h2so4 on insoluble salt cuo so cuo or cuoh or cu co3 so you can have either we can have cuo we can have cuoh twice or we can have cu co3 this is the three things you can have and this is going to be added to h2so4 so we are going to have h2so4 going to be formed and this is accordingly going to form cuso4 so this is going to be forming cuso4 plus h2o over here but of course in this case in this particular case it will be cuso4 plus h2o plus co2 so this is the only difference because you know that carbonates when they are going to react with acid is going to give you carbon dioxide so otherwise it is going to give you this thing and this is going to be in blue color so there will be a blue colored uh, solution which is going to be formed in this particular case so what you do is a simple method you take a beaker you take sulfuric acid in it and add to it any of these three so you are taking a beaker so it's a simple thing you are taking a beaker you are taking a beaker taking h2so4 over here so this is h2so4 and uh, to this h2so4 you are adding the cuo or whatever any any of these things any of these things are being added to this particular thing so when you add this thing it is going to and stir it properly so when you stir it so and you slowly heat it okay when you heat it and you slowly going to heat this thing so it's going to slow heating is going to take place so uh, heat slowly and stir till no more residue remains so you are going to stir it so that it is going to become a insoluble uh, sorry it is going to give a homogeneous dissolved mixture okay so it is going to be a completely stirred thing so that it is completely dissolved inside now you will find that that on dissolving it is just going to give the reaction and it is going to give you CuSO4 so uh, solution obtained in step 1 be removed uh, to remove residue matter you are going to filter it out so you are going to take this thing and then you are going to take a funnel with a filter paper and you have to pour the material through the filter paper so that whatever is the residue which is left out of CU of these things which is left out is going to be filtered out and once it is filtered then what you are going to do is that this particular liquid you are going to take it in a trough of you know, something like a evaporating dish this with a liquid over here and you are going to heat it so on heating what will happen is the water will evaporate and there will be crystals of CuSO4 on top of this so hence you are going to get the uh, crystals on cooling so you have evaporation is the filter at X is in the evaporating dish to the point of crystallization hot saturated solution of copper sulfate is obtained the cool the hot saturated solution with crystals of uh, when crystals of CuSO4 and 5H2O crystallize out filter and dry the crystal so that is the principle method so very simple beaker beaker ke andar H2SO4 this H2SO4 you are going to take a uh, dilute H2SO4 so and you are going to add any of these three inside it stir it with a slow heating so that there is no residue left out still afterwards you are going to filter it out after filtering out whatever is the thing remaining you put it in the evaporating dish start heating it so that the water is evaporating and you are going to get start getting crystals on it so crystals what you are going to get you are going to filter it out and dry the crystals to give you CuSO4.5H2 that was the first method of preparation of the salt that was CuSO4 we now move on to the next one so the process what we are seeing over here is nothing but the preparation is by dilute, sulfur, dilute acid solution so we can say it's again double decomposition reaction or uh, yeah double de decomposition reaction the next one is the process 
for second one is sodium sulfate so that is Na2SO4 dot NH2O okay so Na2SO4 dot NH2O now the process what you are going to take place in this case is going to be titration okay this process is called titration now in titration uh, what you are going to have will be a burette so there will be a long tube like structure over here this is called as a burette it has got a tap over here so this is a tap this burette has got a marking from here 0 over here so that will be 0 and it will be marked like this maybe if it is 100 ml so it will be 100 marked over here so this is how it will be marked you are going to fill it up completely so the complete thing is going to be filled up with dilute H2SO4 so you are going to fill this up completely with dilute H2SO4 in a beaker you are going to have the solution of NaOH now what we do is that in that NaOH we add a small quantity of phenophthalin so phenophthalin now the phenophthalin what is going to happen is this phenophthalin okay oh phenolphthalein yeah. this phenolphthalein will give it a pink color okay this is the, this will become a pink colored solution NaOH will become a pink color solution so the reaction will be NaOH plus H2SO4 will give you NaSO, Na2SO4 plus H2O so this is what is the reaction is going to take place so now what you could do is you are going to add drop wise the acid into the base okay into the base any which is the base which is right now pink in color and we know by the indication that a pink that is a phenolphthalein which is pink in color that is alkaline in color is in alkaline nature is going to turn colorless when it is becoming neutral so hence you are adding acid to this pink colored solution drop wise and as soon as and you are going to keep on stirring this particular jar so it will be a flask it will be not a beaker but it will be like a flask so it will conical flask will be there so that is easy to stir so if the conical flask basic reason is that it is easy to stir because you can have a cap and the base is there and you can easily stir it so you open the tap of the uh, this is the burette so you open the tap of the burette and you keep on stirring you keep on stirring this particular thing like this so that you get the required uh, mixture now as soon as this turns clear so what will happen on adding this will turn clear okay this is clear in color so when it becomes clear so it, initially this was in pink color because of the phenolphthalein when it turns clear it means that it is formed into salt plus water so then of course the same procedure you are going to take it in a dish evaporating dish heat it over here and get the crystalline form so crystallization will be the next procedure which you will follow to get in the Na2SO4.10H2O in the evaporating dish and then which you need to dry it so we see by action of dilute acid H2SO4 on a ba soluble base sodium hydroxide since both the reactants and the products are soluble titration is conducted to determine the completion of the neutralization reaction to determine the amount of sulfuric acid required to neutralize a, a, a amount, known amount of sodium chloride so yes this will also help you to find out that how much amount so if you have taken 100 ml of NaOH you know that how much amount of dilute hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid will be required to neutralize the thing so that also will be able to get it so this is the reaction Na2, uh, Na2, NaOH plus H2SO4 with Na2SO4 plus H2O a uh, procedure wise burette take dilute H2SO4 in the burette A and fill it till uh, 0 mark 
you take 25 ml of the NOH by a pipette. So there's a pipette. Pipette is a thing like this. This is a kind of a glass straw having a marking over here. So when you suck the and uh, the NOH, you are going to fill it up, and then you are going to, it's something like this. You are going to suck it like this, and then when you see that it is coming up to this point, you are going to close your tap like this. So when you close it, it will completely be 25 ml because that marking is of 25 ml, and then you pour it into this particular conical flask, and then uh, do that for the job. So you take pipette out, pipette out 25 ml of NaOH uh, in the conical flask. Uh, flask A. Add one, uh, to the flask one or two drops of indicator phenolphthalein are added to the NaOH. So solution in the flask turns pink. Titration procedure continued and additional uh, addition from burette add dilute H2SO4 drop wise from the burette into the conical flask containing NaOH. End point when the end point at the, at the end point the pink color in the flask just changes to colorless, indicating that all the alkaline in it is neutralized. The burette tap is closed and at that point the solution in the flask is transferred to the evaporating dish. Salt preparation is by evaporation. The solution of the evaporating dish is in, uh, to the point of crystallization. Cool the hot uh, saturated solution when the crystals of Na2SO4 10 dioxide H2O crystallize out. Dry the crystal. So this was the process, uh, procedure for production or sorry not production. Uh, laboratory preparation of sodium sulfate Na2SO4.10H2O using the method of titration. So titration is this particular process. The next one is the preparation of iron sulfate or zinc sulfate. Okay, next one is iron sulfate or zinc sulfate. So we have got iron sulfate or zinc sulfate okay this is iron sulfate or zinc sulfate so this is the process wherein you are just going to add the active metal to a acid so it's a very simple process wherein you take a beaker with H2SO4 in it so you take a beaker this will be having dilute H2SO4 in it and then you are going to add to this particular thing add fillings file fillings of Zn or Fe you are just going to add this thing to this particular addition over here and then stir it filter it as you did for CuSO4 stir it thoda heat kar do usko okay so uh, heat slowly so that it stirs properly filter it so that the residue is removed and then you take it in the evaporating dish Evaporating dish se usko evaporate kar do. After evaporation, what you get is nothing but the uh, crystals of FeSO4 dot 7HO. So you get over here Fe plus H2SO4 will give you FeSO4 plus H2 gas is going to be evolved. So that is uh, the thing, or you can have the same thing with Zn also. So the beaker, the, take beaker, take uh, in a beaker, take dilute H2SO4 in a, a beaker and add iron filings or zinc. Heat slowly till effervescence uh, cease and no more Fe or Zn dissolve. So you are going to keep on heating it and stirring it till the time you are seeing the small effervescence of H2 gas being given out. So till the time the H2 gas is given out, gas is given out you are not going to stop it or uh, stop stirring it and heating it. The solution obtained in step 1 to remove residual iron filings or zinc granules along with an impurity is by filtration. So you are going to filter that particular thing and then you are going to do the evaporation part. So evaporate the filter, filtrate x to point of crystallization. So you are going to keep on heating it till the points to come comes to a point of crystallization and then hot saturated solution of iron sulfate or zinc sulfate is obtained. And then cool the hot saturated solution when zinc crystals of FeSO4.7H2O or ZnSO4.7H2O crystallize out. Filter and dry the crystals. So this is how you are going to prepare the uh, iron sulfate or zinc sulfate. Okay. We move further to see the next method and that is the process of 
आयन क्लोराइड दैट इज आयन क्लोराइड सो वी नो इट इज एफ ई सी एल थ्री आई टोल्ड यू दैट इफ इट इज थ्री ओ इट इज गोइंग टू बी फॉर्म बाय डायरेक्ट कॉम्बिनेशन एफ ई प्लस सी एल गिविंग मी सी एल टू इज गोइंग टू गिव मी एफ ई सी एल थ्री सो बैलेंसिंग दिस थिंग इट विल बी थ्री ईयर टू ईयर एंड टू ईयर राइट so that will be fe plus cl3 cl2 will give you fe cl3 that is the direct combination method now in direct combination method you are what you are going to have is a different kind of apparatus so what we see is we are going to have a glass kind of a flask or a, uh, you can say glass cylinder and to this glass cylinder you are going to seal it completely and to this thing we are going to put over here certain quantity of iron so this is nothing but iron in a form over here so it will be iron wool or iron and coil so that is what you are going to put over here and then you are going to pass through this a uh, gas that is chlorine so the chlorine gas is going to make to pass through this and you are going to start heating this from below so through the into this chamber we are allowing the chlorine gas to pass through the iron which coil which is over here this is the iron coil the iron coil which is here is going to be heated up so on heating this thing the chlorine and then get mixed up together and then they are going to come in contact so we are going to get is over here the gas in the form of fecl3 so this particular gas needs to be condensed so here what we do is we allow it to go into a conical flask so this is a conical flask over here this conical flask is such that it is placed inside a container having dry ice so this over here is nothing but the freezing mixture so this is freezing mixture that is you can take dry ice or anything which is going to give you a good amount of cooling possibility over here so when it is done like this so this is going to come here and then there will be the process over here so uh yeah and certain amount of there will be something over here which will be giving you a uh, drying agent that is nothing but cacl2 so cacl2 will be the drying agent here okay and this is the outlet so let's see what exactly happens here so let's see first one an iron wire coil an iron wire coil is placed in the combustion tube as shown in the figure so this is the combustion tube in which you place iron wire or iron wire coil dry chlorine gas is passed through the combustion tube expelling air from the apparatus so what you do is that you are going to first remove so first of all when you start it a part of the air is going to be expelled out so whatever air was there is removed and then the whole chamber gets completely filled up with chlorine so slow heating on the combustion tube results in the reaction between the dry chlorine and iron so there will be a reaction between the dry chlorine which is there so the dry chlorine is over here and the iron which is here they are going to combine in this particular equation and they are going to uh, start reacting then the heating is discontinued and when the iron turns red hot since the reaction is exothermic now you are going to discontinue this, this heating is going to be stopped later on because this reaction is an exothermic reaction so plus heat is going to be given out so being a exothermic reaction you need not need, you it's just a initial condition till the, the iron becomes red hot you need to heat it after that the, the iron is going to remain red hot because the amount of heat generated is going to maintain the heat inside step 3 is volatile salt fecl fecl3 is a volatile salt whose vapors condense in the receiver flask kept in the freezing mixture so you are going to get the freezing mixture so this will be what is going to be the fecl3 so this is fecl3 which is going to be obtained inside this flask where it it is put in a freezing mixture 
Delicusin FeCl3 is highly delicusin and is kept dry using a few cells. Now FeCl3, now we, we are going to learn what is delicusin and what is efflorescin and also, uh, but meanwhile I can just tell you that delicusin means it is something which is uh, going to absorb moisture from the air. So this FeCl3 what is going to be produced is going to be delicusin in nature and because it is delicusin what we do is that the air which is coming from here is automatically first dried using a drying agent. We have put a calcium chloride over here. So the air which is coming here is going to be dried, which is when, when it is dried, it is going to not have any moisture in it. Hence this FeCl3 is not going to uh, get moist. So this is how the delicusin FeCl3 uh, is kept uh, dry using the fused calcium chloride over here. So this is how it is formed now there are uh, in the picture what you are there the diagram which is there FeCl3 is delicate and hence absorption moisture absorb moisture it is therefore stored in closed container so this is how they are preparing uh, the FeCl3 using the method of active salt uh, active metal reacting with sorry not active metal any metal reacting with a gas so it is direct combination reaction or you can say uh, synthesis reaction. So this was about the uh, iron chloride. We now move on to the next part and that is the lead chloride. So lead chloride 